So I'm, I'm very pleased to welcome Craig Atkinson. He is the founder and uh, the owner of uh, Cafe Royal Books, a unique brand in uh, British photographic publishing. So tell me, Craig, when did you first get interested in photography? Um, about, well, I started publishing 2005 um, and that was kind of more, they were more drawing based sort of zines I was doing then. Um, and then as my work became more kind of involved in photography, I suppose, so was what I was publishing. So that was um, around 2008 to 10, I suppose, was, was that. Because you, you, uh, a few of the zines are actually done by your good self. So you started out, did you go and study photography at college or how, how did your interest in photography develop? Um, I studied fine art, um, which is what I teach now. And then I, I kind of, I always painted um, these big sort of abstract things. Um, and I got sort of tired of that. And part of the reason I started to make zines was um, as a way of getting art out without relying on the gallery um, in, a, in a quite a quick, aff affordable way. Um, so that sort of, that led into things. And then the, the reason I started to work with photography was um, because I was using a camera to document collections of things. So it wasn't necessarily kind of going out shooting stuff. It was, it was more of a, um, a very functional kind of thing. So. So the first few Cafe Royal uh, books are actually uh, your drawings and things like this then? Drawings, yeah, that, that kind of thing, just sort of sketchbook, um, kind of meaningless drawings really. It was um, because the, the paintings that I used to make took about 18 months to complete and they were big and heavy and expensive and then I had to store them and so on. Um, I kind of wanted something that was almost the exact opposite of that. So the drawings were fairly kind of whimsical and um, they, they came together as something in, in the books really. Uh, yes, it was a test, I suppose. How did you start marketing uh, these, these early zines of yours? Um, it was MySpace, I think, at the, at the time. That was, it was a time when MySpace was sort of starting, I suppose. Um, I, mean, it was quite I, I don't know what MySpace is actually. Is it MySpace, like Facebook? Yeah, it predated Facebook. Um, so it was, it was like one of the first social platforms, I suppose, and it gave you, it, I suppose it was before privacy and things like that um, as well to an extent. So you could get instant access to a global audience and um, kind of a, an audience of like-minded people, which was really helpful. So I've built up a, a kind of network of, people making zines or illustrators or people just drawing for drawing's sake and um, we started to trade zines and then they would put me in touch with shops in LA for example and I would do the same over here so we, we kind of were all helping each other it was quite a nice thing. And why is uh, Cafe Royal Books called Cafe Royal Books? I was, at the time I was looking for a name to publish under rather than it being Craig Atkinson books because I thought that would seem a bit kind of weird it being just my work that I was publishing at the time um, so me and Joanne my now wife were in Edinburgh um, and I had in the back of my mind a, a name that I needed to find but I was also on the hunt for somewhere to propose to her um, and we ended up in the Cafe Royal pub in Edinburgh so I ended up not proposing there because I thought history would, would be that I proposed to her in a pub. Um, but I quite like the name, so that's, that's kind of where that, where that came from. So that's a good answer. So how many have you done now? I think you must be, what, on 600 or so? Yeah, of the photography ones, there's five archives, five complete archives, so that's 500. And then another 50 that aren't yet in an archive, but including the, the kind of original... Um, zines from way early on there's 950 mm -hmm. that's astonishing and, and how do you find the work uh, to, to publish does it come to you automatically yeah as how, time does, it, goes how on. does it work now it's, I, it's, it's a mixture really I've kind of got a list of, of work that I know and would like to publish that I, I try to find and get um, but as time goes on and more people are, are aware of Cafe Roll I get more submissions um, so it's yeah, most are probably 80%, 70% of submissions. And do you think you'll, you'll ever run out of things to publish? Or, or do you, are you sort of still overwhelmed with projects and books you want to publish? 
I, I don't think it'll ever run out. It's it's. Um, I mean, I I publish. I tend to publish at the moment, nineteen sixty two, two thousand and five ish. But I think as our time moves on, the two thousand and five will move on. So it's. I, I'll always publish sort of fifteen years ago. So there's always going to be more work coming. Uh, out. And why do you have this gap between uh, publishing and uh, things being taken? Um, because I think it's a it's a a weird thing, I suppose, but. I think because we're living now, um, things kind of become a bit more, not valuable, but th th something changes with, with a decade or so. When you, when you look back at something, when you, when you kind of don't know it and take it for granted anymore, um, and you look back at it, there's, there's something there that, you, that kind of reconnects you, it becomes more important, or um, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's... There's something about things that are happening now and publishing it now that I, it's not, that's not something that I want to do. The, almost the, the benefit of hindsight. Yeah, possibly. Um, and especially, I mean, the, the way the world is now, I suppose, when you, when you look back at the 80s and then again the 60s and again the 40s, you, you can start to see these kind of things that... Um, have happened before they're happening again and have we learned or, or, I, you know it's kind of it's it's an interesting sort of cycle that we we live in and i i, I mean i think we can safely say that most of the uh, books are in black and white uh, is that something again that you've done on purpose or is that just if you're looking back at the 60s and 70s what most things were shot in yeah most of it was black and white sort of naturally um there's more as as the time becomes kind of um closer to us in a sense more is shot in colour, so that there'll be more colour books in the future, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a remarkable archive that you've produced. I mean, if you've got uh, you know six hundred odd, nearly eight hundred scenes of of predominantly, I mean, would would we say it's more humanistic uh, for the journalism that you're attracted to, or is that just what people did in the sixties and seventies? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's maybe more what what I'm attracted to. I don't know. Um, and it's not not everything that people did, I suppose, in the sixties and seventies. I don't, um, but I think maybe the submissions that I get are based on books that I've put out in the past. So it kind of mm -hmm. um, it encourages maybe that type of photography. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of. I suppose I'm I'm more interested in that. I, I'm. It's a sort of learning curve for me in a way because I. I started off publishing not knowing a great deal about photography at all um, but I also wanted to learn about things that predate me um, and things that went on so as much as I learn about photography I, I kind of each book is its own story and about a particular event that I kind of um, find out more about with each with each one. And I mean do you publish um, the work of photographers that say have, have passed away or, or or do you try and keep it to those that are alive and well. No, it's um, it, it, it's any. I mean, it's it's about the pictures really. So it's not it, it's not necessarily about the photographer. Um, but I do. I work with the estates and copyright holders and archives um, to publish the the work of photographers that are, that are no longer here. Yeah, I, I recently did a couple with um, Philip Walmouth. Um, work with his family, and it was kind of we. I mean, he uh, he sadly died as we were publishing the book so we moved them forward so that he would see them um, and since then they've kind of they've, you know the, his work's been very popular it's um, yeah there's lots lots of different things and if, it, if a zine or a book sells out will you reprint it or is, and how many do you do in the first place is it just give us a rough idea of the numbers the early ones are about 100 150 um, and then now they average about 250 to 500 um sometimes as reprints it's always by mutual agreement so it, you know it, it it would have to be a book that i suppose th thinking business wise it would have to be a book that would sell to reprint it um but you know if, if the photographer wants to reprint then we can we can do that normally when you look at all this work together what does it tell you about the subject matter that british photographers have chosen um Good question. 
I, mean, I think there's, there's sort of common things as protest, obviously, that's a, a kind of major part, I suppose. But there's a there's a lot, a good chunk of it is that kind of British humour and the, the kind of, maybe not quite slapstick, but the, the sort of beach holiday and the, um, uh, the, the sort of historical chauvinistic side of things sometimes. Um, but then there's things, the kind of political and the... Um, the, the sort of like David Hoffman's sort of housing estate work um, from East London in the in the seventies. Um, you know, I suppose you, there's probably five to ten different sections that I could put things in. If and uh, is there anything that photographers don't like to photograph? Um, when you think about how it represents the times that we have lived through, what are the gaps? That's a good question as well. Um, I don't know, I suppose, because they because it's not there. So I, I don't know. Something that I, I I'm, there's a lot of protest, and it, there tends to be a generally I, that I'm I'm kind of sweeping statements now, but there seems to be a lean to the left, I suppose, with the work that I've published and the photographers that I've published, and that's not intentional. That's just the work that has come to me or that I've sought for whatever reason. Um, I try to keep the books quite neutral mm -hmm. as, as far as I can. Um, because I th And they don't have text in, so I, I, I try and keep that neutral so that the, the reader or the viewer can kind of make their own mind, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree that if you're a photographer, a documentary photographer or a photojournalist, you've got to like people. Mm. And if you like people, it's inevitably that you're going to be more inclined to the left than mm. to the right. Because is there such a thing as a right wing for the journalist? Have you published a right wing photographer to I your knowledge? Know. I don't know. Not to my knowledge. I'm sure I have. Um, <laughs> but I, not to my knowledge. And there's, there's lots of things like that that I kind of, I never do find out. And, and I almost never want to as well because it, that that level of remaining neutral, I think, um, is important because I I want the books as a as a larger series. I want the books to be um, a a kind of true account, I suppose, of of then of, of the time maybe. Mm -hmm. And you don't actually pay your photographers; you give them a, a percentage of the print run, yeah, which seems to me a very sensible. Does anyone say, "Oh, I can't do that if you don't pay me"? Or yeah, do... some have, yeah. Um, they don't sell for much, so a, a percentage, I, I always feel, um, I mean, I'm always very aware that without the photographer's work, the books wouldn't exist. Um, a percentage of the books photographers tend to sell, to, to sign and then sell and do okay with, um, from what they've told me. Um, Sometimes I do if if they say well I can't I, there's nothing that I can do with those books, then a percentage of the the profit or the takings um, or credit for the, the online mm -hmm. shop. But it's yeah, it's it's difficult because they they kind of cost so little to buy. I'm sure you've had a lot of people offering you Black Lives Matters uh, marches already. Is that is that the case? Yeah, there's a there's a lot, and it I mean that. That's great. It, uh, it's great. You know, it's great that it's been documented so well, I suppose, and so widely. Um, there's a lot of um, protest work from kind of much earlier that I'm publishing. I've, I've published some of um, Janine Riddell's work, um, sort of around that subject. It's funny. I hadn't actually realised that uh, the work is uh, always slightly historical. It's something, yeah. you know, it's, it, now you pointed it out, it all makes sense, but I didn't think of that before. Mm. Yeah, there's there's a few exceptions, but not many. I, recently I've started publishing, um, I called it the World Series, so that that sort of allows me to publish work that maybe wouldn't fit into the main mm -hmm. um, the main series. So there's, what have we done so far? Um, there's some more sort of street photography work, and then there's some that I'm doing with Steve McCoy, um, that's kind of slightly humorous, um, uh, I suppose, um, topographic kind of work that sort of more collections and around the idea of collecting. 
So uh, anyone watching this that's interested in submitting work to you, they just contact you through your uh, website. Yeah. H how does it work? Well, just a, an email, really, a, a link to a website's best, I suppose, with a brief description. Um, if there's no website, lots of people don't have websites, so some low-res files through WeTransfer or, or similar. Mm -hmm. um, and that's I, I get back to everybody eventually. It kind of it can take me a little while sometimes, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean it's it's good to look at the things that I've published before to get an idea of. And, and dare I ask this? You know, out of the people that are submitting work to you, what, what percentage do you think end up getting published? Um, I get probably five submissions a day. Really? Yeah, I get quite a lot. Um, some are very obviously. People have sent every publisher in the world the same email and just click go. Um, some aren't the type of work that I would publish, and some really are. So it, it's less five a day. That's, that's astonishing. So that means you're getting thirty five a week, about, and you yeah, publish one book a week. So the, the chances of of getting one published are, the, are slim. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. But a, a lot of the submissions are kind of blanket submissions to everybody, so they're mm -hmm. they're not. Um, Kind of appropriate submissions, I suppose. I don't want that to put anybody off <laughs> submitting. I, I like submissions, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I guess it's important that you do. And then, what about things like uh, Instagram? Uh, do you look for Instagram photographers that you think might be uh, worth pursuing? Have you ever followed up someone from that source? Yeah, um, there's a few people recently that I'm going to be publishing, um, and they are. Um, I mean, it's not just Instagram. It's I, I kind of look anywhere really there's you I'll, I'll see things on twitter that come up or, or somebody um there's on facebook i mean social media is great for, for this kind of thing but there's a lot of um kind of history city specific history pages on facebook that i just i enjoy looking at anyway and then i'll come across a picture that you know, it's a brilliant picture that's uncredited so i'll have to mm -hmm. try and find the photographer um so things have happened that way that, that have of work. Mm -hmm. Are there people that buy every single uh, book that you publish? Um, does you? <laughs> I, I, know, I know. Listen, I know the answer to that. But uh, <laughs> how many how many sets uh, do you you know do you manage to sell of the of the full hundred archive that you do every hundred zines? Um, well, the first few were, were a small edition. Um, as time goes on, there's there's a bit there's a few more of those archive boxes. But there's I I try and get those to collections that make the work kind of accessible um, so that people can I mean it, the work that I publish a, a lot of it's unseen un, unpublished previously um, and much of it is by photographers that people don't know who they should know um, so I, I like it when museums and galleries and, and that kind of thing take yeah. the, the archives um, yeah so some of them do all of them so we're very lucky here at the uh, foundation. We're just about to put on a show of uh, Cafe Royal Books. Uh, is this the first time you've done a project like this to actually show the work uh, beyond, the, beyond the books themselves? Yeah, first big exhibition. There, there was something at the Photographer's Gallery 10 years ago, um, sort of much, more, much smaller scale and just for a, an evening, um, which is good. This is the first, first exhibition um, and certainly the first time all the books have been seen in, in one place. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Martin. Cheers.